Good afternoon and welcome to my laboratory. Um, okay, what you're looking at there is a stroboscopically illuminated uh, magnetic bearing electrostatically powered motor. And it looks like it's turning really slow, but that's because of the strobe illumination. We're actually going uh, 2620 RPM there. on the strobe attack and as you can see I've mounted a couple of extra stuff on there there's a little brass disc at the front end and then on the eraser end there's another brass disc that's glued to a piece of plastic, a plastic disc and these are for homopolar motor experimentation I had to move the solder weights forward to compensate for the weight of that uh, plastic disc but other than that there's no balancing that's been done it's still radially way out of balance just as it was before and uh, I don't know if you can see it or not but the pencil point is making a small circle of course it's doing that at 2600 rpm but it's making a small circle on the glass there okay. and I have it set up uh, right now I'm powering it from a 15 kilovolt power supply, negative power supply. So the brush is cathode, the ball is anode, but the ball is grounded to the case of the power supply. So it's kind of a weird system where it's anode grounded. Um, and I've got a uh, little Simpson microammeter, moving coil microammeter, in the, in the circuit there, and it's indicating 55 microamps right now of current. And you can, I haven't actually measured the output voltage, but it's nominally 15 kilovolts. So that's what we're running on right now. And to prove that that's actually a good current reading, what I'm going to do is just unplug the, uh, the power supply to the high voltage power supply for a moment and what you'll see is you'll see the rotor here slowing down the, it'll look like it's speeding up counterclockwise but that means it's slowing down under the stroboscopic illumination but watch the indication on the ammeter. okay here we go pulling the power oh I think you can see that the slowing down rapidly and the current meter went below zero just a little bit and now it's gradually coming up and it'll come up to about five or ten milliamps three or five or microamps indicated uh, because the meter is not quite mechanically zeroed right there okay so that's zero current going in. Now I'm going to plug it. I'm going to plug it back in at the main power supply here. Okay. Ready? Now you can see the current gradually coming back up. And let's see if I can catch the speed with the strobe attack. Okay, so that's about 1700 RPM and accelerating. And the current's going up. RPM and still accelerating and the current's going up. So the current will recover back up to that 55 or 60 indicated uh, microamps 
which would be about 50 microamps because of the zero offset there. So about 50 microamps, okay, and it's running at speed. Catch it with the strobe again. Okay, that's about 2250 or so right there. It's still accelerating a little bit. Now here's the interesting thing. Okay, so we're running at about 50 microamps DC input to the rotor. That's what's spinning the rotor. Now what I'm going to do is stop the rotor with my fingers. Okay, now the rotor is stopped. And you can see we're indicating about 45 or 46 microamps there with the rotor stopped. So that represents, that 45 or 46 microamps represents a leakage current that's not actually rotating the rotor. So now if I give the rotor a spin, I can do this with one hand. Okay, I got it spinning again, finally, and as you can see now the current is coming up a little bit, it's at 50 microamps now, and the rotor is speeding up, right now the rotor is going about 1300 RPM and accelerating. I'm going to set the strobe attack kind of faster so we get a good illumination. And as you can see there, the current has gone up to a little bit over 50 microamps. So it was drawing 45 microamps when the rotor was stopped. That's just leakage current. And now with the rotor accelerating, it's up to, call it, 55 microamps. Okay. So the interpretation of that might be, let's see here, take a reading. Now we're up to 2,000 RPM, still accelerating. You might be tempted to conclude that the uh, cost of accelerating that rotor is only about 10 microamps since it uses 45 when it's not spinning and 55 when it is spinning. So there you go, a rough power measurement of the cost of spinning this contraption and accelerating it. Let me catch it with the strobe again. Uh, 23, about 2300 RPM and I'm still accelerating. All right, now I found that if the uh, conductive disks are right up, up against the ring magnets like they ought to be for a homopolar motor, then I get eddy current breaking from the suspension magnets and also probably from the ring magnets that prevents the thing from going over about 1200 RPM and the eddy currents interfere with any production, any homopolar production as well. Um, I have a little system on this voltmeter over here. I have these tiny little carbon fiber brushes that I made for the voltmeter. And uh, I can detect a very slight bit of homopolar generation uh, with the voltmeter on the 200, or rather 20 millivolt range, 200 millivolt range. I get a few millivolts of homopolar uh, action if I'm very, very careful about how I do it. But that's, uh, that's with the magnets that are on there. I think if I add a, another ring magnet, a strong one, near the eraser end and balance it appropriately near the pencil point end, then I might be able to get far enough away from the suspension magnets to avoid the eddy current breaking and get some more decent homopolar action uh, from a conductive disc. I'm up to about 2500 RPM now and seems to be stable with that. And we're 
about 50, call it 58 microamps now. So about 13 microamps is the cost of, 10 to 15 microamps call it, is the cost of accelerating that rotor. Uh, and once again what I'm going to do is stop the rotor with my fingers. Okay, so now the rotor stopped and <laughs> there's that same 50 microamps or so of leakage. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, telling us anything real or not. I mean, certainly we've got 50 microamps of current going on, but how much of that is actually going to accelerate the rotor? I just gave the rotor another spin, and it is accelerating. And let's check the meter by unplugging it. Unplugged. Meter goes to indicate a little negative current at first, and then it recovers back to slightly above zero. And the rotor is spinning down. So now if I plug it back in, boing. I don't know if you saw that or not, but the the uh, the thing kind of went up to about 110 microamps and sort of stopped hard there at 110 microamps, and now it's dropping back down. And as the rotor accelerates, the current will go down again and stabilize at about 55, 58 indicated microamps. Try that again. I'm going to pull the power. Negative current. This is with the power disconnected. And then as the rotor slows, we come back up to zero. Now when I plug it in with the rotor moving, going about 120 microamps right away and then dropping back down as the rotor accelerates. See how fast we're actually going. So that's about 1900 RPM right there and accelerating strongly. It's hard for me to keep it frozen. 2000 RPM and we're back down to just over 60 microamp microamps indicated on the meter there and still dropping. So as it accelerates and then finally reaches a stable speed there's hardly anything shown on the meter beyond the leakage current that it has when the rotor is not even turning. Alright, thank you for watching, thank you for your patience. I know this was a long one.